Catholic worker promotes kind of two kinds, two different sort of ideas of economy that contrast with capitalism. The first is distributism. And distributism is based on the idea of lots of private ownership, like as much of the wealth is shared as possible. It's based on the idea that workers own their tools. Um, and uh, so you can kind of picture it as like what you think of as like idyllic village living, right? So everyone has their own little garden where they grow some things. Everyone has, you know, a small piece of land or, you know, that they, that is theirs mm -hmm. um, to tend. And then we have cooperatives that do our health care, that create our goods that we need to. But it's really local and regional living, um, which is kind of the key thing here. We're not um, basing our economy on profit. Because if we base it on profit, that means we're going to find the lowest cost possible, which means we're going to have little kids in Bangladesh making our clothes. Um, so it's not based on profit. It's, it's based on the common good and need. Then we produce it close to home. Um, each other, we produce it so that um, there's a connection to the production and that the production is based on need and not profit. Um, and so then, then that kind of, you can see if, if we're producing things because they're needed and not uh, needing things that are produced, which is how it is now, we don't need advertising. We don't need to be swarmed with commercials to buy things because we know what we need to buy um, to get by. Um, the other economy which the Catholic worker is, is kind of embodies more than anything is the gift economy. And so it's based on the idea that work is gift. All we have is time. You know, we're gifted with time when we, hopefully, when we're born. And so how can we spend that time? Isn't that time valuable? Mm -hmm. And can we use it to create things that, that are helpful to each other, to create things that, like music and art and things that are, um, that are beneficial to, to our souls and to, to us as whole people, mm -hmm. um, as opposed to going to a factory to do a microprocessor for, you know, that will go into five other pieces that will eventually go to a computer, you know? Yeah. Um, I think the technology piece is big in this and degrading Excellent. the value of work. I think one of the worst things that happened was the, the factory line, probably, in terms of the value of work, in terms of, like, a renaissance understanding of how things work and skills. We don't have any skills anymore at all. You know, um, we're, we live in a food desert right now. If something happened and Chinook stopped having food, we would all fall apart. Because we don't have any skills anymore, you know. Um, there's a real de-skilling of our culture, I think, that um, that ties along in with devaluing work. Because um, really, our work is just seen as going to driving to an office, sitting in front of a computer, and coming home, and that's work. But like, work is also childcare, and it's cooking, and it's cleaning. I mean, those are the most valuable and amazing forms of work, really. I mean, that's what this house is based on: is cooking, cleaning, and hanging out with kids, you know? Um, but what better what better form of work is there? But it's not valued at all by society. Part of that devaluing, I think, is patriarchy. Like, it's these traditional, like, women-oriented things that are not seen as valuable. Mm -hmm. Cooking, cleaning, and child care, you know? Um, so part of it is sort of recognizing the, the gender discrimination and that and trying to rid ourselves of it, which is hard to do because it's very strongly ingrained in us that childcare should be free, but I should go to my work and make my, you know, $10 an hour.